Welcome to Show and Tell Saturdays on Tea Time with Afternoon Social. Join me as we hear from my guest for the week as she tells us about her business, products, services, podcasts, and other fun stuff. Grab your favorite cup of tea. It's party time. Good afternoon and welcome back to Tea Time with Afternoon Social. I'm Teresa Waterback, your host, and we have had this fantastic guest from the last few episodes. We wrote some really interesting information, especially yesterday's episode on uh, all of the challenges of ADHD and multiracial families. So uh, go back and check those out if you haven't already. Uh, but uh, Dr. Jen Harrison, she's a dissertation coach. She is a coach and supervised first generation ESL and non traditional students in the UK at the USA uh, for over 10 years. And she offers support in writing, research design, motivation, and research methods. And, that, and specializes in helping achieve, student people achieve their dissertation and career goals. And so today we're going to learn more about her business and how she, what are some of the strategies she, she uses to uh, coach her clients. So uh, Jen, Jen, I'm going to turn it over to you and you can explain what your services are and uh, how your business is going there. Absolutely. So, um, as you said, I'm a dissertation coach. Um, that is a little bit different to someone like a dissertation editor who, whose job is really to tidy up the work you've done. I actually work with students who are finding that they are stuck or they're struggling or they just know that they want support as they work. They don't necessarily need um, writing help specifically or, or design help specifically or somebody to check their grammar but what they need is somebody to tell them what is supposed to happen in a dissertation are they doing it right are they on the right track if they're stuck what's the best way to get unstuck again so they still want to work very independently and i want to stress that because there are a lot of very dodgy companies out there that will say that they are coaches or that they are editors and they will actually just write the dissertation and that's so disreputable it's horrible but um no so the, this is uh, you know students who realize that they need that little bit of extra help and i function as a support so when you do a doctoral degree you usually have a supervisor who's assigned to be your guide and your mentor um, but a lot of them are very uh, overworked <laughs> it's the easy way to put it they have too many students they have too many other pressures on their time they're expected to publish they're expected to teach and so they, they're not able to give the students a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention many of them are not trained educators you know they're, they're phenomenal at their subjects of expertise but they don't necessarily know how to give good feedback or how to encourage somebody or how to explain something well some of them do but a lot of them don't so um my role is really to be the ideal supervisor who is right there working with only you and doing nothing else but working with you and helping you and you know answering your emails faster than three months down the line and generally just being there to support these students and make sure that they have the help that they need to get done in a reasonable amount of time with relatively little stress um, and you know, get get what they want with the degree. And you, we've uh, discussed in the last uh, couple of episodes um, where you're helping women with more with their with uh, you know, mental health issues and other things as well, not just the actual finishing of the dissertation. Yes, and that that was unexpected to me. That is not where I thought the business was going to go where I started it. But what I realized very quickly was um, a few things. First, most of the students I was getting were women. Uh -huh. Most of the students I was getting were women of color. Many of them were also working high pressure jobs or were parents or both, often with young children. And a lot of them were struggling, like, yes, they were struggling to know how to write a lit review or, you know, where to find good sources or what kind of study should they do. But when you dug a little deeper into that, they were struggling with why isn't my supervisor supporting me? Is my work not good enough? Should I really even be doing this? I don't think I'm as good as the other students. Maybe I should just give up now. If this is this frustrating, it probably means I'm not meant to be doing this degree. And that's what I find is usually underneath a lot of the issues that people are having. Many of them may not be aware that they are a particular type of learner. So they might be a visual learner or an auditory learner, but they don't know that and they're being taught via text and writing and, and they don't understand where they're struggling. 
or maybe they have a condition like ADHD, which they have never had diagnosed and they don't understand why they cannot focus on a lecture that's 30 minutes long and take the information in the way the other students can. Or they don't understand why they can't work until midnight productively or why they have trouble sitting down to start that draft. And so I found a lot of my work these days is, is kind of 50-50. It's, it's providing that actual tuition in what they should be doing and how they should be doing it, but it's also getting them to think a little bit outside the box. Have you considered trying this? Have you considered moving your desk to another place? Have you considered building breaks into your schedule? Have you know, are you making sure that the lighting is right around you? Are you reaching out to your mom for support with your kids? Because these are all things that are okay to do. And sometimes all they need is for somebody to say, it's okay that's okay that that's perfectly like nobody's judging you for doing that because I think they do often feel judged and a lot of that comes from inside and then some of it comes from the academic community which does not prioritize self-care at all right uh, I'm thinking about my niece-in-law she was from Mexico and she uh, was an attorney but she's decided to that was the, something she didn't want to pursue in a nursing law or something now that in the states with my nephew, uh, but she went, went back to school for a master's degree for early childhood education, and and she's really struggling with even introducing herself mm-hmm. in the first class. It, it's that fear of, oh, I want to sound like everybody else. I don't want to. I was like, they don't know. They forget to be themselves. I think. Yes. If, if you're finding as well that they're just afraid to step out and really find out that who they really are <laughs> yes and there's very much um there's very much a culture of competition uh-huh. so um students are encouraged to compare themselves to other students are you working as fast as they were they completed within this time are you going to be able to complete within that time they had 30 pages in their lit review how come yours has only got 10 um but i think that's often thoughtlessly done institutions and programs you know they don't really stop to think about the impact on the student they're very much there's an ethos of challenge and let's push you and let's you know drive you as hard as we can which is good in its way but it needs to be balanced out by yes it's okay if you can't it's okay if you need extra help it's okay to ask for support and I think that aspect is missing it can leave students feeling very inadequate or burnt out or both Mm-hmm. And what it, what it, so this one of the biggest challenges you ha- have when you're head teaching, coaching them is to try to figure out where they're really struggling versus the technical side of completing their paper. Yes, um, yeah, because the technical side of it is actually fairly straightforward once you have the tools you need. You know, mm-hmm. you might struggle with referencing and citation. But once you either know where to find the guide or know that it's okay to hire an editor and just have them do that, that's a relatively simple problem to solve. But if you are refusing to even open up your document because you're so afraid to do the referencing and citation, that's that's another issue and that can be harder to overcome. Mm -hmm. It's a a bigger struggle because it's not just putting words on a paper. Yes. You've got all the emotions and all of that mixed in with everything. I think the biggest struggle that I have for students, that I see students struggling with, is when the expectations that have been piled on them are just so high that there's, you know, I can help them feel better, I can give them strategies to make it easier, but at the end of the day, when the expectations are piled too high, they're in it, they're they're stuck, and you know, they need to, something needs to give somewhere for them to be able to to move forward. So I have students who, for example, are working a full-time job, They've got children, so they're supposed to be looking after their children as well. And then their university is saying that they have to get this done within X amount of time, plus do this, plus have a portfolio, plus go and do some field work. And helping the student to understand, look, it's not you that's the problem here. The problem is that what you're being asked to do is more than you can physically do. Like, nobody can do this. So you've got to decide how you're going to manage that. Are you going to give something up? Are you going to take time off work? Are you going to leave this program and, and do something part-time but help you know having them understand it isn't possible sometimes to do everything right that can be challenging. <laughs> yeah and then uh, like you said evaluating what's going on and 
what changes do you need to make in order to complete this? And, yeah. I, if, I, if I was a, a disreputable coach, you know, it would be good that they're struggling, they would need me forever. But really my goal is to get them to the point where they don't need me anymore. And sometimes that means saying to them, is this really what you want to do? I've watched you struggle for six years. You know, six weeks we've tried everything that we can think of to make this easier for you but the pressure is coming from outside consider whether you want to be in this program do you, do you really want to be doing this or actually you know what you got this <laughs> you don't need the help all you needed was a bit of confidence you got this now you don't need me <laughs> you, you get that uh, work out work yourself out of a job type of <laughs> then you're gonna go find another client <laughs> But that's the goal. That's the goal. That's why I got into this, is that I didn't want to see these students struggling in the way mm -hmm. that the students were struggling. I had a great experience as a PhD student. I was horrified when I saw what other people were going through. Right. But yeah, like I said, that, that's so, you know, you're working yourself out of work. It's a success. Indeed. And I have, I have my plan B. As soon as all the students are sorted out, I'm opening my knitting store. <laughs> that, that, that's the whole... Big jump, <laughs> <laughs> but it's all entrepreneurial, and I and I know uh, I jump into a lot of different uh, business type of things. So, so as I I think that you're maybe uh, your ne one of your next steps is though. <laughs> you, no, I think you there will there will always be space for people who offer. Um, support in terms of you're on the right track you know good job well done try this and I think like even when you are at the top of your game and you are working really well and really successfully there's still room for that yeah and and it's good to you know when you're developing relationships that they can always come back uh short term hmm. and you know, something else happens and want to fall back a little bit but they know that they've got a great coach right there that they can come back and get a little bit more yes oh. yeah so um i think we've already talked about what's your, what's next in your business next in the business so i am looking to start um doing more kind of um you'd asked me about group coaching and i'm a little bit cautious about group coaching because I really want to think carefully before I, I move into that but what I do want to do is start building up a community around my students making connections between them giving them a space where they can um, share ideas and challenges and kind of get support from a whole group instead of just me uh -huh. you know so that they, they have kind of a family that they can be part of so I think that is the part of the business that I'm developing at the moment yeah, kind of like a Facebook group or yeah, a place yes. that you can come together. And... Yeah, regular meets, um, a chat group of some kind. So I'm working on that at the minute. That would be great because then they, they know that they're not alone. Yes, yes, that's exactly it. Yeah, and it's not just them and the coach. It's, there are other people, especially other women there. And I know women like, that's why my business is based on uh, empowering and supporting so women can come together. Yes, exactly. It seems like that's a big power when women come together. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so, well, is there anything else you'd like to leave with our audience today? Um, I think just I'm going to reiterate the same theme that I've been kind of harping on for all of these episodes, which is when you need help, it's okay to reach out for help. Use use the help that's out there because there's no reason you should be expected to know it all and do it all on your own. Very good. Well, thank you for that. And uh, I, we've had a wonderful time with uh, Dr. Jen. Like I said, check out the other two episodes and uh, hopefully we'll get to connect with her again later. And I'm going to leave all her information in the comments below so that you can contact her. So uh, thank you again for joining us and we'll uh, chat with you later. Thank you.